my fellows, thanks so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you're all doing well. A couple of videos ago, I mentioned that I will be sharing some care tips for the Velvet Anthuriums. So here we are with a video on Velvet Anthurium care tips. In my Anthurium collection video, I mentioned that I used to be really intimidated by this genus of plants, not only because it's so beautiful with the heart-shaped leaves, the striking veins, and the velvet texture, but also because I heard that they're not the easiest to care for. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it did take me a little while of trial and error to get the hang of growing them, and I am still by no means an expert in velvet anthuriums, but I thought I would share some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way in the event that it's going to be helpful to some of you who are also interested in growing some velvet anthuriums. While there is no guarantee that what has worked for me is going to work for you, I thought I would share it anyway, just for your information. But before we get started, if you're new around here, my name is Grace and I post plant videos every week. So if you're interested in planty content like this, feel free to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you get notified when a new video is out. Now I've done a fair few of these care tips videos, which I will link a playlist up above and in the description box below, where I usually go through the usual suspects, meaning light water, uh, substrate, your humidity, temperature, fertilizer, and things like that. And this video is not going to be any different. I'll go through the exact same things. And as usual, everything will be time stamped in the description box below so that it's more convenient for you to reference back whenever you need to. All right, so let's start off with lighting. It is known that anthuriums are not too fond of too much light. They actually prefer indirect light. If you prefer the look of darker leaves on your anthuriums, then indirect light is the way to go because the lower the light, the more it'll bring out that dark coloration to the foliage. However, of course, they still need light to grow because they are plants after all and they need that energy source. So it doesn't mean that you can get away with just leaving it in a dark corner with very little light. Having them in a shadier environment with less exposure to direct light is ideal. Personally though, I do like to experiment with my plants, so I do grow my anthuriums in a number of different environments. Some of them I've left in the grow tent with artificial grow lights, and others are in the second bedroom with west-facing light as well as indirect north-facing light. I haven't noticed too much differences in the coloration of the foliage due to different lighting conditions, but I'll definitely continue to experiment and update you in a future video. But if you guys have personally experienced that, definitely let us know in the comments below. We'll be really curious to hear if that's true or not. To give you an example, this is my Anthurium papillolaminum hybrid that I've talked about in many of my previous videos. It just recently put out this new leaf right here. I feel like every time I update you guys on this plant, it's always a new leaf that I'm showing you. And as you can tell, this newest leaf is the largest of the lot. Like it has been upsizing pretty frequently. And um, this is one that I keep in the second bedroom with indirect exposure to north facing light so it gets a lot of nice light but not too direct and in my opinion i think that the color of the foliage is still pretty dark i don't think that it's faded in any way at all this is still quite light because it's still hardening off but you know the color is actually pretty nice and deep so in my opinion i can't really vouch for the theory that the lower light you give it the darker the foliage will get but yeah i'll be curious to know if any of you have experienced that definitely let us know in the comments below another example this is my anthurium crystallinum that i was growing in my grow tent for a little while and i've only recently moved it over to the second bedroom and have it in west facing light so this is the newest leaf that it's put out. It is a little bit wonky because I think I damaged it when it was growing out, but you can definitely see that the size on this is significantly larger than the previous leaves. These were all sort of narrower and longer, um, but I found that the more light you give it, the rounder it gets if that makes any sense, because I noticed that the anthuriums that I have growing in my grow tent tend to be longer than round, and the ones that I've been growing in the natural light room, or the room that gets natural light, they, they tend to be a lot rounder in shape. I mean, that's what I've observed so far. I'm not sure if it's 
a maturity thing or if it's conclusively due to the lighting conditions but I'll continue to observe and update you guys like I said and again in terms of the coloration I can't really tell as yet because this is still hardening off but it's not like the older leaves are getting any lighter or getting bleached or anything like that also sometimes I think could it be due to the genetics of the anthuriums as opposed to the lighting conditions so that's another variable to consider but yeah those are the two examples that I I wanted to show you as a reference point for light. And in terms of watering, I tend to water mine every week or twice a week depending on the substrate my anthuriums are in. Returning viewers to my channel will know that I struggled with root rot on some of my anthuriums in the past and so I do tend to play it safe with them and only water when the substrate looks to be a bit dry or if it's a little bit light in the pot or if it shows signs of dehydration like getting a little bit limp or curling around the edges of the leaf. Now with anthuriums, they don't really like to dry out in my opinion. So if you see it start to curl, it is probably a little bit too far. You want to be able to water it right before it gets to that stage. However, it really depends on the type of anthuriums because I have noticed that some of my anthuriums are a little bit hardier than others. And if I let it dry out for a little bit longer than they'd like, they'd still be able to bounce back. And this is an example of that. This is my anthurium dark complex. This is one that I tend to forget about because I have it tucked away somewhere in my grow tent. And oftentimes I only realize I forgot to water it when the leaves are like completely curled. Um, so it's happened to this one quite a number of times, but each time it has bounced back and has no issues at all that I can see. It doesn't even have any like crisping of the tips or anything like that. It's looking pretty good and completely fine. You wouldn't even be able to tell that this is that this has been underwatered a number of times. But yeah, I can't say the same for some of my other anthuriums because they do have a little bit of crisping on the tips. As an example, this is my anthurium silver hybrid. You can see that there is a little bit of crisping around the tips of these and even on the edge and I believe this might be due to underwatering but some also say that it could be fertilizer burn if the fertilizer is a little bit too strong. So yeah, I'm not really sure about that but I will keep an eye and see if anything changes and I'll make a future video on an updated care guide um, once I've experimented a little bit more with my anthuriums. Now let's talk about substrate. Because anthuriums have really thick, fleshy roots, I personally don't have much luck growing them in soil. But I've heard of others who have really good success growing them in really chunky aeroid mixes or in orchid bark. But I personally prefer to grow them in pure sphagnum moss or in macro, which is like the equivalent of lechuza pond here in Australia. And the reason I prefer to use these substrates is because they are more free draining and reduces the chance of overwatering and therefore significantly reduces the risk of fruit rot. I've even rehabbed two of my anthuriums that's basically lost all of their roots from uh, root rot in the past and I've recuperated them in pure sphagnum moss and they're doing really well now. And so if that's something that your anthuriums are struggling with, definitely try using pure sphagnum moss or a different medium rather than soil. Or if you're really not sure about watering for anthuriums, I would highly recommend semi-hydro so you can use leca balls or something like lechuza pond. All right, now let's talk about humidity. Now there is a preconception that anthuriums require really high humidity. However, I found that this is not necessarily the case. Maybe it's the type of anthuriums that I have in my collection or the specific hybrids. And I will say most of my anthuriums are hybrids. So it could be because of that because apparently hybrid anthuriums are a lot hardier than their pure counterparts. So that could be the reason why, but I personally found my anthuriums to be pretty tolerant of lower humidity not low humidity per se just lower humidity so around 40 percent or 50 percent they are still okay and of course the ones that are in my grow tent get to enjoy higher humidity than that i can't speak for the anthurium moraquianum or the luxurians or any other anthuriums that require more humidity to thrive because i don't have them in my collection so but I think the key is that they need time to acclimatize to a change of environment. So for example, if you purchased an anthurium that was growing really well in say Queensland where humidity is really high and you're bringing it into say for example Melbourne where humidity is generally lower, 
then it will tend to struggle and you might notice some crisping or yellowing. However, if you keep it in a more controlled humidity environment, whilst it is acclimatizing to Melbourne humidity, then it should generally be okay. I'm using Australian states here to demonstrate the point, but you get the idea. So for example, if you're bringing a plant from Florida to New York, say, um, I think the same principles apply. As an example, this is my Anthurium Silver Hybrid that is grown outside of my grow tent in lower humidity conditions. And it looks pretty good. And here is my Anthurium Crystallinum that is grown in my grow tent. And similarly, I'm not sure if you'd be able to tell which is grown in what environment, which goes to show that humidity really isn't the be all and end all when it comes to anthuriums. They can be acclimatized to grow and thrive in lower humidity conditions. Now let's quickly talk about airflow. Some anthuriums do better under a cloche or in an enclosed terrarium, but I honestly can't comment too much on this because like I said, most of my anthuriums are hybrids and they do generally okay in regular humidity. However, I will note that the ones that I grow do need some airflow. I've noticed that when they lack air circulation, they do tend to develop some yellowing due to fungal infections or bacterial infections, and that is really not a good look. And so I do provide all my anthuriums with airflow. Next up is temperature. The anthuriums definitely thrive in warmer conditions, but I can't comment too much on this because Sydney is quite temperate. We don't really have extreme hot or cold weather, so I haven't really observed them being affected by temperature in any significant way. But to keep it simple, as long as you are comfortable in the temperature of your home, the anthuriums will be comfortable too. Before we finish off with the last couple of points, if I have missed anything or if you have any additional care tips, please do share with us in the comments below. And if you're getting value out of this video so far, please do me a favor and hit that like button to let me know. Now on to fertilizer. In 2020 through to mid-2021, I was exclusively using organic wormwe uh, to fertilize my plants. However, I did switch over to GT Foliage Focus somewhere through 2021. Again, this is not sponsored, but I noticed significant improvements in the growth of my plants since using this fertilizer, so this is the one that I would recommend. Ever since using this fertilizer, I've seen dramatic improvements in the speed of growth of my plants. As I said, with my Anthurium papillilaminum, um, it has been growing really, really quickly for me. And as you can see, the leaves are getting larger and larger as well. And I do think that it is partly attributable to the fertilizer that I've been using, as well as the amount of light exposure that this one gets. Similarly, with a lot of my Anthuriums, I used to be a victim of the two leaf club. So when one new leaf comes out, another one would die off and it would never really graduate out of the two leaf club to become a bushy plant. But look at them now, they are looking really good and really bushy. So key takeaway from this, if you're struggling with the same issue I was, definitely look into a really good fertilizer. Finally, we've gotten to the topic of propagations. I haven't had too much experience propagating my anthuriums as yet, but I did split a two-headed plant into two, which I will show you. The anthurium silver, this was the mother plant, and this is the baby plant that I split from the mother. But propagating is definitely something that I'll be looking to do in the future because my anthuriums are all bushing out really nicely and also they seem to be growing really tall so there are a lot of these nodes that I can just chop and grow some of these aerial roots out so that's something that I will look to do in a future video so if you're interested in a anthurium propagation video definitely let me know in the comments below and I will film that for you guys while I propagate uh, my anthuriums. Last thing to mention about propagations is that sometimes the anthuriums will put out a pup and it's really easy to just split from the mother plant. Just make sure that you keep some nodes and some roots on the baby plant when you remove them. All right, so that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed and found it helpful. If you wanna see more content on my anthuriums, I've left a couple of videos up on screen, so feel free to check them out. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay mellow, my fellows.